Hey community, we're back and I'm Brandy B, the community MP. And I'm Brandy G, the community MP. And together we are B, &B, B, &B the, the community, community MPs. MPs. So today's topic is sleep apnea. Yes. What's the definition? All right, so um, obstructive sleep apnea is a disorder that is characterized by obstructive apneas, hypoapneas, or respiratory um, effort-related arousals. Wait, 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 before we go any further, what is an apnea? Apnea is when you start breathing while you're sleeping. Okay. Okay. So, Brandy. <laughs> so, it's usually caused by um, repetitive claps in the upper airways during sleep. So, I tell my patients what happens is that, especially if you're obese, mm -hmm. you have a lot of redundant tissue in the back of your throat. Mm -hmm. So, when you sleep, it relaxes and it claps. So, it's hard to force air right. to the back of your throat to the rest of your body. Yes. So, basically... It's just that redundant tissue that claps and you can't get air in. Mm -hmm. So that's obstructive sleep apnea. So what are some of the facts, B? Facts. So it's the most common sleep disorder. It affects over 22 million mm -hmm. Americans each year. Up to 80% 80 per, 80 of people who suffer mm -hmm. from sleep apnea are not even diagnosed. With, so It's usually, more than 22 million. Yeah. Ooh, yes. That's a lot of people. That is. I think, well, maybe... It has a lot to do with obesity. It does. And I guess as we go into this um, go into this talk, that we'll see that obesity plays a big part in yeah, sleep apnea. Yeah. Um, and, and it's more common in men, mm. uh, African Americans, Hispanic, and Pacific Islanders okay. than any other group. Okay. So when you think about sleep apnea, I guess there's different levels or different types. Mm -hmm. You have mild, moderate, and severe. Mm -hmm. And um, what happens is those you, you get categorized in those different areas based on how many times you start breathing while sleeping right. yeah. during your sleep study. Mm -hmm. So the first type is mild. So mm -hmm. mild, the person may start breathing between 5 to 14 times during their sleep study um, within that hour of the sleep study. So these people, they may be asymptomatic. So they may not um, have any symptoms, mm -hmm. but their partners or whoever watching them sleep may notice that, you know, they're falling asleep during the daytime yeah. or at night they may be snoring something, mm -hmm. but they usually don't have that many symptoms. Yeah. So then you go to the one who has moderate. So you may start breathing 15 to 30 times during your sleep study. That, and this that is hour. per hour. Yeah, per hour. That's yeah. a lot of times. Times to start breathing yeah. while you're sleeping. So these people are usually aware. They're mm -hmm. aware um, they're falling asleep during the day. They may mm -hmm. be at, at work and at their desk just doing, you know, falling asleep. Yeah. So these people try to prevent this from occurring. So you see these people drinking probably coffee, mm -hmm. some type of caffeine drink, mm -hmm. to just because they know it's going to happen. Yeah. So they, they start trying to do things to prevent it from happening. Yeah. Um, they're able to continue their daily activities, um, but maybe at a reduced level. Yeah. And these people um, are at increased risk for motor vehicle accidents That's because scary. they may fall asleep while going to sleep, uh, while driving. Yeah. So and usually you see hypertension in these these yeah. patients. Yeah. Hmm. And then severe was thirty or more times. Yes. They stop uh, breathing and per hour. Per hour. hour. Yes. Yeah. That's severe. That is. Yes. And of course, these people. Um, they, 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 they fall asleep. They could be sitting up in a chair watching television. They're out. Yeah. They fall asleep so easily. Yeah. Um, those are those people that you are like talking to one minute yeah. and they like literally sleep, yes. snore in the next yes. minute. And they are at increased risk for having accidents, especially if they're dry. Mm -hmm. Um, they, and I know a lot of times, a lot of the truck drivers, if you have sleep apnea, you can't drive. That's true. Because you may fall asleep while driving with trucking. I've gotten a couple of people come in, um, from I guess they they go for their DOT uh, yes. physicals and if they're overweight and they have high blood pressure then they get referred yes to be evaluated to see if they need to um, see a pulmonologist for sleep apnea and a lot of times when you severe you have most likely you have a lot of comorbidities mm -hmm. cardiovascular disease mm -hmm. so you have greater risk for um, heart attacks yeah. you know strokes just arrhythmias yeah. you had greater risk for all those different cardiac events so mm -hmm. sleep apnea is really um a significant um you know yeah. it's, it's something that people really need to know about yeah like we said so many people 
don't know that they're diagnosed. Yeah, and they most people know them. something's wrong because then they start, you know, a lot of the people, like you were saying, they know that they're going to fall asleep during the day, so yes. they just start drinking coffee Hopefully. and all this stuff. They probably just don't know what exactly the why cause I'm so is. Tired. Yeah, like why yeah. I feel like I'm not getting a good night rest. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I wake up in the morning, I'm still tired. Yep. So that's one of the things you want to check for. So tell them about some of the risk factors, Brandy. So some of the risk factors. The older you get, the more increase, the more the higher your risk is. Yes. Being a male, obesity, as I said. Yes. Probably plays a major factor. Yes. But you know, whenever we start doing this, whenever we go through the facts and we're like, oh. Um, this is, you're at increased risk of this. And then like all the other videos, obesity, obesity. is like one of the number one things. And you gotta think about it. So if you're obese, the tissue in the back of your throat is probably redundant larger. and larger. Yeah. This is how you obese, that a tissue mm -hmm. is in the back of your throat is obese. Mm -hmm. So therefore, puts you at greater risk. Yeah, so, and then, you know, when, Obesity doesn't just affect like the parts of your body that you can see. Yeah, it affects other parts like right. around your heart, mm -hmm. you know, your liver. Mm -hmm. So it does making those organs work harder. Yes. So and then if you you're at increased risk if you have like a cranial facial or upper air, airway abnormalities. A lot of times that's recognized in Asian yes. um, patients just because their their facial structure is different. Yes. Uh, and then. If you have enlarged tonsils, mm -hmm. um, enlarged adenoids, abnormal maxilla, or a short mandibular size. Yeah. Um, and of course, if you smoke. So yes. obesity, smoking. <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, I wish, there, I wish I could just say something to make people realize that mm -hmm. those two things are like horrible on your body. I know, I know. But we say it, and we say it in all I sorts know. of ways, and we preach it, and we... Trying our best to live, <laughs> you know, live it. Right. So, and it, I don't it's, know. It's going to catch on. It's, it's going to catch on. I'm, I'm, stay positive. <laughs> because let me just stay positive and pray it that will. you guys yes. understand yes. how severe. You know, it's, it's a journey, be, you know. Yeah. It's not going to change overnight, but it's small steps. Yeah. Because I'm making those small steps. Yeah. yeah. Do you smoke? No, I don't. Okay, good. No. I was Do you? Say, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> you ever seen me with a cigarette? No, no. Have you ever seen me with one? <laughs> yeah. No, you I'm haven't. Just <laughs> <laughs> um, also, so family history of snoring or if you have another family member that has obstructive sleep apnea. And usually this is because um, the facial disorders. Yeah. So it's not because... Cause it's not because like oh, genetics, genetics yeah. but just like if your family is known to have this different facial structure, you may be at risk for development mm -hmm. sleep apnea. Yeah. Okay. And then increased risk with, uh, I guess if you have some other medical dish yes. conditions like heart failure, mm -hmm. hypertension, asthma, COPD, mm -hmm. and then pregnancy. It can occur in pregnancy also. Why? I don't know. Can Let's I, think about it. Maybe because you got this whole... But let's think about it. Maybe um, the weight gain. The weight gain. Um, related to pregnancy. Yeah. And I don't know. I, don't I know, know when I felt, whenever I was pregnant, I just felt like I couldn't breathe well. So I don't remember. It's been so long. <laughs> I don't remember. It's been a while for me too, but I, I just remember having a big old belly and just like trying to lay on your back and you feel like you're suffocating. I don't remember none of that. You don't? No. Well, I don't. How was your baby? My child is about to be 25, <laughs> so I don't remember any of that at all. I was so young. I guess I was just living life. Oh, no. Just breathing. Just out here breathing. <laughs> so what are some of the signs and symptoms? Um, daytime sleepiness. Mm -hmm. if you, you wake up, you had a, you wake up and you feel as though you didn't have a good night's sleep. You may fall asleep at your work desk or talking to a friend. Mm -hmm. That's some of the symptoms. Um, if you, your partner says you're snoring too loud. You're gasping for air. You're choking. You're snorting. That's usually like what I hear the most. Yes. My wife said I snore. Really? Yeah. Or, so, or she said I'm sleeping in another room. I'm not sleeping in the same. I can't sleep in the same room with him anymore because he snores so loud. Yeah. Go get tested for sleep apnea. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. If your partner says, "Babe, you start breathing at night. You start breathing and you wake up mm -hmm. aroused. That's a sign sleep, of sleep, sleep apnea. apnea. Yeah. Waking up with a headache. Every morning, I have a chronic headache. I have this headache every morning. It goes away, but every morning, I wake up with this headache. Mm -hmm. It's probably sleep apnea. I'm overweight, obese, 
if you know that you you have a crowded or pharyngeal airway, which means that the back of your throat is crowded, your mm -hmm. tonsils are probably touching your uvula, the little part that hangs is probably touching the tonsils. Yeah. <laughs> like you're not getting enough air, and so usually when I do my oral exams with my patients, I can tell who who has sleep apnea. Yeah, yeah. I can tell. It's like, uh, you snore, huh? Mm -hmm. I can tell you snore. You be like, how you know I snore? I'm looking at the back of your throat. You <laughs> you have no room, there, yeah. no room yeah. at all. Um, people who have a large neck or waist circumference, um, men, the neck diameter is greater than 17. Um, the woman, neck diameter is greater than 16. I always say the person who don't have no neck. No, I'm, you laughing, but I'm serious. <laughs> You're such a good demonstrator. <laughs> but I'm, I'm serious. So I, I, you know, I did ENT for several years. Yeah. And the doctors that I work with, they would always say, Brandy, they come in with no neck, sleep apnea. We, we going to get a sleep study because we know. Most likely they're gonna have sleep apnea. So that's some of the, si the signs and symptoms of sleep apnea. So behind it diagnosed. So usually it's diagnosed with a sleep study. So sometimes they will do it. You can get a sleep study done at home yeah. or um, at like a lab. Yeah, and I think that's the only way you can diagnose it. I mean, you can't just go by the uh, physical examination. You right. do have to get a sleep study yeah. in order to diagnose it. So I know we're big on prevention. Mm -hmm. B, what can we do to help our view, view, viewers prevent Prevent getting sleep apnea? Neck exercises. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Physical activity, <laughs> staying active, exercise, 30 minutes a day at least, four to five times a week, okay. cardiovascular exercise. Okay, okay. What, what do I say? What do they need to do? Get a glazed donut look. Okay, yes. <laughs> so. and, and, and it's crazy because it's something that simple mm -hmm. that can prevent you from getting sleep apnea. And if you do have sleep apnea, something that simple, exercising, weight mm -hmm. loss, can help you maybe come off your CPAP and your BiPAP yep. machines. Yep. Yep. Weight loss. That's like, and I tell anybody, how do I get rid of sleep apnea? Lose some weight. Yep. You got to lose weight. And also, I saw that um, a lot of people, you know, may take, like, um, sleeping pills, sedatives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That push you at risk too because it you helps relax, you relax yeah. the back of your throat. Yeah. So stop taking those sleeping mm -hmm. pills, sedatives. And yeah, because when, when you do take the, um, especially if you take like a muscle relaxer or something, yeah. you're like in a deep, deep sleep. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, just stay active. Mm -hmm. um, try to prevent yourself from getting mm -hmm. overweight. And if you are overweight or obese, then just start exercising so, to... Uh, maintain a healthy weight or achieve a healthy weight. Okay. okay. And treatment, of course, is going to be physical activity mm -hmm. and weight loss. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other treatments? Um, you may, if after your sleep study, they, you may get recommended to have a CPAP or a BiPAP. That's the machine that you put on your face at night yep. to help you. Um, it forces air. <laughs> yes. So, and it prevents you it, from being it, able th to. That claps area, it opens up. Yeah. So the air just <laughs> go down and you can sleep. A lot of people don't like it because it, it, it's not, it's not sexy. It's not sexy. No, it's like, and it's <laughs> not comfortable. The kids may think you some type of, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they may think. They think you may not, you don't look human. No, you don't. <laughs> but, but, but you're breathing. Yeah, and breathing. all your organs are... Getting some air. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's the main, that's that's the main purpose to make sure the air is profuse throughout your body. Yeah. And then there's, of course, surgery. Yeah. So if your tonsils are the problem or your adenoids or yeah. it's like a facial structure type thing, then you can have surgery. surgery. I remember... Um, I, when I first started as a nurse practitioner, I had a patient who had sleep apnea, and he had to get a trach. Oh my god! Because he was that obese, mm -hmm. that was the only option was to get a trach. So his trach was truly for airway. That's sad. Yes, yes. So it can be. It, it, it's severe. And whatever if the trach ever came out or whatever, that was it. Well, let's pray he is doing well yes. and his trach never came out. Yes. Yeah. Well, unless he lost weight and yeah. Yeah, and got his trach out and then he's breathing on his own. Yes. All right. So that's really all about sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. And if you guys have questions, let us know. So we're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. There's so many ways you can reach out to us. Yes. And we got answers. Yes. If for we you. If we don't have them, we will get them. That's for sure. Yes. Okay. So as I say every week. This does not take the place of your primary care provider. Right, Brandon? No, still come see me. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just information for you to share with your family and friends, mm -hmm. to spark a conversation, just to get the community, you know, thinking more about your health. And prevention. Yes. So still go and see your primary care providers, B&B, &B, or whoever you may see. <laughs> right. 
Look at you <laughs> with the rhyme. Okay. Okay. Be, be the rapper? <laughs> <laughs> okay no. but, but yeah follow us on instagram facebook subscribe to our yes. youtube channel it has grown so much and i'm just really excited about not necessarily about like the channel growing just for my i don't know just to see my face but that means that like all this information is reaching a lot of people. That's good. And that's, that's good. what our goal was. And you edu- told me something today, like we've been I didn't realize we had did so many videos. Like yeah. you guys, y'all go check out our channel. Yeah. We have so many videos. Um and I mean, so we can see where we started and where we are right now. Mm-hmm. Has it been a year? It hasn't been a year oh, no. yet. No, we started in October and so it's it, it March. has not been a year yet. So just to see the growth. Mm-hmm. Um and I'm interested to see. I know we're going to probably go back and do some of those previous topics that we once mm-hmm. did just to perfect them and yeah. see what, how we're growing. But I'm excited about this journey. Yeah. That, so our upload this week will be number 30. Wow. Isn't that wow. crazy? Yeah. We, so y'all, we're putting a lot of information out there she for you. she be pulling me. Because I'd be like, oh, <laughs> come like on. Get it together. <laughs> come on. <laughs> These people need us. Yes, yes. But yeah, so, yeah, subscribe to our YouTube channel and... Yes. What? Why do we do this? Because community is our beauty. It is. Yes, it is. You guys have a great day. We'll see you soon.